Welcome to the Ultimate Sports Blog Podcast. Today is Wednesday, July 18th, 2018. Today I'm going to recap the All-Star game from last night. Go over a trade that might be on the verge of falling through in Major League Baseball. Go over last night's NBA Summer League Championship game. Go over a monster NBA trade that happened late last night and early into this morning. Two NFL holdouts that I forgot to mention on yesterday's podcast. And I'll close today's podcast by picking the major awards for the ESPYs tonight. The All-Star Game, American League over the National League, 8-6. to six. That's six in a row for the American League. Unbelievable. I picked the National League. I was wrong. Edwin Diaz with the win. Russ Stripling with the loss. Jay Happ with the save. Top of the second, home run Aaron Judge, 1-0 American League. Top of the third, home run Mike Trout, 2-0 American League. Bottom of the third, home run Wilson Contreras, 2-1. American League still on top. Bottom of the seventh, home run Trevor Story ties it up at two apiece. This is where the craziness happens. Top of the eighth, three-run home run Gene Segura, 5-2 American League. Bottom of the eighth, home run Christian Yelich makes it a 5-3 game. Bottom of the ninth, a game-tying home run by Scooter Jeanette, 5-5. Top of the tenth, a go-ahead home run by Alex Bregman, 6-5 American League. Top of the seventh, home run George Springer, 7-5 American League. Sacrifice fly, Michael Brantley, 8-5 American League. That was the only run of the game that wasn't scored on a homer. And then the bottom of the tenth, a home run by Joey Votto made it a little interesting. 8-6 American League. Was your final. The MVP went to Alex Bregman. Who hit the go ahead home run. For the American League in the top of the 10th inning. Blake Snell gave up the homer. To. Wilson Contreras. Charlie Morton. Gave up. A couple runs. Edwin Diaz gave up the game tying homer. Jay Happ gave up a homer to Joey Votto. Chris Sale and Luis Severino each gave up a hit each. Joe Jimenez only retired one batter and struck him out. Jose Barrios pitched an inning and gave up a walk. Blake Treenan, perfect inning. And on the National League side, Max Scherzer, two innings, two hits, an earned run, a walk, and four strikeouts. He gave up the homer to Aaron Judge. Jacob DeGrom gave up the homer to Mike Trout. Mike felt the units pitched an inning, gave up a walk, and struck out one batter. Aaron Nola, one inning, gave up a hit, and struck out two. Jared Jeffries, one inning, walked one guy. Felipe Vasquez, an inning, a hit, two strikeouts, and a walk. Josh Hader had a rough night. Because people found some racist tweets that he tweeted when he was a teenager. People were retweeting him. Social media was going crazy. He had to address it after the game. And boy, his reputation among baseball fans has changed very quickly. And he had a rough night. Only pitched a third of an inning. Gave up four hits. An earned run and a strikeout. Well, he gave up the go-ahead home run to Gene Segura, but only one of those runs were earned. Brad Hand, a nice inning and a strikeout. Ross Stripling, an inning and two-thirds, four hits, three and runs, no walks, and a strikeout. He gave up the back-to-back homers by the Astro players, including the go-ahead home run by Alex Bregman. So, fun all-star game. Fun All-Star Week with Bryce Harper winning the Home Run Derby. All-Star Game was a lot of fun. The last two All-Star Games are pretty good. Both went extra innings. Both had a go-ahead home run by an American League player. Last year was Robinson Cano. This year it's Alex Bregman. And last night during the game, Ken Rosenthal broke news that the Dodgers were finalizing a trade to acquire Manny Machado from the Baltimore Orioles. Five prospects are going back to Baltimore in return, including... Yusniel Diaz, who was a stud in the Futures game, probably a snub of the MVP in favor of Taylor Trammell of the Reds. 
And there's now a holdup in the deal as two of the prospects going back to Baltimore failed their physical. So now there's a holdup. Maybe somebody swoops in and steals Machado from possibly going to the Dodgers, whether it's Philadelphia, Milwaukee, maybe the Yankees get back in it somehow. But Manny Machado to the Los Angeles Dodgers appeared to be done last night. It's not done as of right now. Summer League. Last night was the championship game. The Trailblazers defeated the Lakers 91-73. I took the Lakers. I was wrong. Congratulations to the Blazers. 7-0 in the Summer League and your Summer League champions. KJ McDaniel, 17 points in the win. Josh Hart had 12 in the feet. And Josh Hart was named the Summer League MVP. Well-deserved. He was the best player in the Summer League this year. And speaking of the NBA, monster trade happened. Early this morning, Kawhi Leonard was traded from the Spurs to the Raptors along with Danny Green. Going back to San Antonio, DeMar DeRozan, Yaka Pertle, and a 2019 first-round pick. Top 20 protected. I like it for Toronto, although Kawhi is probably going to walk in a year. It's a nice chance, and maybe he is this year's Paul George that ends up liking it in Toronto. But in George's case, he loved it in OKC and won three sign. We'll see with Kawhi. Maybe he is this year's Paul George. Going to be interesting to see from a Spurs perspective. I don't really love that the first round pick is top 20 protected. It should be unprotected. They should have thrown in another first round pick. Yeah, I get it. Maybe Toronto doesn't think he's going to stay. I'll say this much, though. San Antonio got more back for Kawhi than Indiana thought they got back for Paul George at the time, but nobody knew that Victor Oladipo was going to be such a stud, and that trade looks better for Indiana than it did at this time a year ago. But DeRozan's a nice player. He'll probably be the go-to guy on that team along with the Marcus Aldridge unless they start from scratch and end up trading both DeRozan and Aldridge and Pau Gasol and people like that. They get the first round pick, although it should not have been top 20 protected. It should have been either top 10 protected or unprotected, period. I can't believe the Raptors somehow pulled off a trade for a top five player in the league when he's healthy and not giving up an unprotected first-round pick. Good for Masai Ujiri. This trade will be a win for the Raptors if Kawhi Leonard resigns. And this is a win for San Antonio if Yaka Pertle turns into one of the bigger stud big men and is a piece that turns into a bigger and better asset down the road, kind of like what happened with Indiana and Victor Oladipo. Although I still think Paul George is a better player than Victor Oladipo. But that trade was worth it for Indiana. And let's face it, that trade was worth it for Oklahoma City because they got Paul George to resign. And we'll get more into NBA, who got better, who got worse, on future podcasts because I still have more to get into. NFL... Le'Veon Bell and Ziggy Ansa did not get long-term deals done yesterday, as well as Aaron Donald and among other players that were either holding out or needed contract extensions. Odell Beckham still isn't signed long-term yet by the Giants. This Bell story is going to be a distraction. It's been a distraction the last couple years. Somehow the Steelers were able to put it behind them and worry about winning rather than a star running back that wants to be paid. And for Detroit's case with Ansa, they, I think, are in trouble if they don't place the franchise tag on him next year because he's pretty much the only thing they have on their defensive line that really makes some opponents scared. He's a great player, and Detroit should lock him up long-term or else they're going to be stuck at the bottom 
of the NFC North as Matthew Stafford gets older. The Bears are on the rise. Aaron Rodgers is still in that division. And the Minnesota Vikings have the best roster in that division, I think, by a mile. Next, I'm going to do my 2010 MLB redraft. I'll go team by team in order of where they drafted in that year. And I'll say the players. Controversial. Number one, Washington Nationals. I took Manny Machado over Bryce Harper. Machado right now is a better baseball player than Bryce Harper. Harper's having a down year despite his high home run total and his high RBI total. But he's hitting only 214 on a team that's not having a good season. Meanwhile, Manny Machado is currently on the worst team in baseball on the verge of being traded, by the way, as I mentioned before. And probably not to the Dodgers as long as they don't fix the medicals. If they fix the medicals, he's going to L.A. probably. But Manny Machado right now is a better baseball player than Bryce Harper, bottom line. And right now, if Washington had to do a redraft, maybe they'd take Machado over Harper, which leaves Pittsburgh to taking Harper. He's still a great player. I don't care that he's having a bad season. I just think a lot of it's in his head that he just wants to be the highest paid player in the game. And he has his reputation. And But he is still a great talent. And I know somebody will ridiculously overpay him this offseason. Number three, Baltimore Orioles, Chris Sale. The Orioles get a pitcher to build around among one of the best in the game. Four, Kansas City Royals, Jacob DeGrom. The Royals get a stud pitcher that the Mets absolutely stole it where they drafted him. I don't think the Mets thought he was going to be this good, but he is this good. He would have been their ace right now. Number five, the Cleveland Indians, James Paxton. He would have been a part of a loaded rotation featuring Cordy Kluber and Trevor Bauer and Carlos Carrasco. Six Diamondbacks, Christian Yelich. This would have been a fine pick. He probably still is a Diamondback right now because the Diamondbacks are just a better organization than the Marlins. He'd be in that outfield with A.J. Pollock, and that would be something to watch. This is a coincidence. Seven Mets, Noah Syndergaard. The Mets did not draft Syndergaard. The Blue Jays did. The Mets got him in that trade that sent R.A. Dickey to Toronto. The Mets won that trade because of Syndergaard and his talent. Who knows how much longer Syndergaard will be a Met because his name's on the trade market as well as the Grom. But when healthy, Syndergaard's an absolute stud, and his stuff is absolutely electric. Number eight, Houston Astros. JT Real Muto. If they had JT Real Muto on their roster right now, then Brian McCann and Evan Gaddis are probably not on their roster right now. That guy's a stud. Nine, San Diego Padres. Andrelton Simmons. Who knows if Simmons would still be a member of the Padres right now. Because don't forget he was drafted by the Braves. And then the Braves traded him to L.A. as they began a rebuild, which is paying off nicely right now. Number 10, Oakland Athletics. Nicholas Castellanos. Very good player. Same situation. Who knows if he would have still been an A if he got drafted by them. But if he was there right now, he'd definitely be starting in left or right field for them. And if Simmons was on San Diego, he'd be their shortstop. 12 Toronto Blue Jays, Jamison Tyon would have been the ace of that staff right now to go with Marcus Stroman. 12 Cincinnati Reds, Robbie Ray, really good pitcher, drafted by Detroit, got traded to Arizona in the deal that sent Didi Gregorius to the Yankees. Ray's a very good pitcher and probably would be the ace of the Reds right now if he was drafted by Cincinnati. 13, White Sox, Adam Eaton. Weird coincidence because Eaton became a White Sox. He was drafted by the Diamondbacks. Diamondbacks traded Eaton to the White Sox, and then the White Sox traded him again to the Nationals and got a lot back for Eaton. 14, Milwaukee Brewers, Yasmani Grandal. He probably would be their catcher right now, certainly better than what they have right now as well. 15, the Texas Rangers, Eddie Rosario, probably not a Ranger right now. He probably would have been traded when the Rangers were a contender. 
16, the Chicago Cubs. Adam Duvall. I don't know if he's sort of been a Cub right now, if he was drafted by them, but he's certainly a nice utility player for them that has some pop. 17, Tampa Bay Rays. Scott Shebler. Shebler has been one of the more improved players in the game in the last couple years. He's been a big part of the Reds' rebuild. If he was on Tampa Bay, I don't know if he'd still be on Tampa Bay. 18, the Los Angeles Angels. Tejon Walker probably would have been the number two starter on their staff with Garrett Richards and Ishoi Otani being the ace there. 19, Houston Astros. Coincidence here. Vince Velasquez, somebody that they drafted and then end up trading away to Philadelphia to acquire Ken Giles. 20, Boston Red Sox. Mike fault the units. I don't know if fault the units would have been a Red Sox long term, but if he was, he would have been their clear number two starter behind Chris Sale. 21, Minnesota Twins. Jock Peterson. A versatile outfielder for the Dodgers who hadn't panned out and has shown signs of life the last couple weeks for the Dodgers. Who knows if he would have made it in Minnesota. 22, the Texas Rangers. Corey Dickerson. Someone else that's a pretty good player in the league. He's bounced around a little bit from Colorado to Tampa Bay to Pittsburgh now. I don't know if he would have stuck around if he was in Texas. 23, Miami Marlins. Evan Gaddis, somebody that would have been absolute trade bait for them. 24, San Francisco Giants. Jed Jerko, somebody that could play all around the field for them. Would have been a nice second baseman or third baseman for them. And if that were the case, if he was at third base, then they probably don't make the Longoria trade. 25, the St. Louis Cardinals. Cody Allen, one of the great closers in the game who's not having a good season. 26, Colorado Rockies. Blake Trinan having a career year for the Oakland Athletics. Certainly would be their closer right now. 27, the Philadelphia Phillies. Aaron Sanchez, somebody that's had an up-and-down career at the Blue Jays. Probably be the number five starter on the Phillies. Maybe not even in the rotation. 28th, Los Angeles Dodgers. Mark Canna. Something that's a nice, versatile player for the athletics. Can play first base, can play the outfield. Would have been the perfect Dodger, perhaps. 26th, Los Angeles Angels. Drew Pomeranz. Probably be a back-end starter for them. Number 30, Los Angeles Angels. Derek Dietrich. Good, versatile player right now for the Marlins. Probably going to be traded. Would have fit nicely in L.A., in the infield especially. 31, the Tampa Bay Rays. Jimmy Nelson. Somebody that's recovering from injury right now. We'll see if he comes back in the second half and has a positive impact for the contending Milwaukee Brewers. If he was drafted by Tampa Bay, who knows if he would have lasted there. 32, New York Yankees. Chad Bettis. Again, somebody that probably wouldn't have made it on this Yankees roster. Maybe he would have because he maybe would, would have been up by 2013 and that was at the point where they were sort of in a rebuild. Derek Jeter was retiring and a bunch of their former veterans were out the door as well. So maybe he would have been a Yankee if he was drafted by them in 2010. That's it for the 2010 MLB redraft. Tomorrow I'll be doing the 2010 NHL redraft. And last but not least, I'm going to make my predictions for the ESPYs. I'm going to say the award. I'm going to go through the nominees, and I'll make my pick for the award. First award. Best Male Athlete. Your nominees. Jose Altuve, Houston Astros. James Harden, Houston Rockets. Alexander Ovechkin, Washington Capitals, and Tom Brady, New England Patriots. My pick, my vote, Tom Brady, New England Patriots, and I believe Brady will win too. Although I wouldn't rule out any of the other three guys. 
who all have significant cases. Obviously, Brady's case is that he's carried the Patriots to their second straight Super Bowl. Jose Altuve led the Astros to their first World Series title in franchise history and won the American League MVP last year. James Harden's case is that he led the Rockets to the best record in the NBA. Alexander Ovechkin's case is that he led the Capitals to their first Stanley Cup in franchise history. Best female athlete, Sylvia Foles of the Minnesota Lynx. Snowboarder, Chloe Kim. Chicago Red Star soccer player, Julie Ertz. And from the... U.S. Women's National Soccer Team. My pick, Sylvia Foles of the Minnesota Lynx. She was a big breakout player on the Lynx last year and helped offset Maya Moore's lackluster season last year. Best championship performance. George Springer of the World Series winning Houston Astros. Nick Foles of the Super Bowl winning Philadelphia Eagles. Kevin Durant of the repeat winners, Golden State Warriors of the NBA. And Dante DiVincenzo of Villanova's men's basketball in the national championship. My pick, Nick Foles of the Philadelphia Eagles. He led the way in place of the injured Carson Wentz to the Eagles' first Super Bowl championship in franchise history. I think Foles is the most deserving of the award, and I believe he will win the award. Although George Springer has a legitimate case, as well as Durant and DiVincenzo. Best breakthrough athlete. Alvin Kamara of the New Orleans Saints. Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers. Donovan Mitchell of the Utah Jazz. And tennis player, Solane Stevens, my pick, Ben Simmons of the Philadelphia 76ers. To me, he was the best breakthrough athlete this year. He is an absolute stud franchise player. I need to see Alvin Kamara do it again, although I do believe in him. Donovan Mitchell is the rookie of the year runner-up to Ben Simmons. He's a great player too, but Simmons is special, and he's going to be leading the 76ers to relevancy along with Joel Embiid for the next 10 years. Best game. World Series Game 5 where the Astros walked it off against the Los Angeles Dodgers. Georgia over Oklahoma in the Rose Bowl. U.S. Women's Hockey defeating Canada in a shootout in the 2018 Winter Olympics. And one that I believe was snubbed from this list was Alabama defeating Georgia in the national championship for football. But my pick is the Rose Bowl that went into multiple overtimes and Georgia found the way to to win, led by Jake Fromm. And I expect both of these teams, especially Georgia, to be better next year in college football. But that's my pick for game of the year, although my pick for best game unfortunately didn't make the list, which was Alabama defeating Georgia in the national title game, where Georgia had the lead in overtime, and Tua Tagovailoa found the way to lead Alabama to the national championship win. Best moment. The Minnesota Vikings defeating the New Orleans Saints in the NFC Divisional Round. Thanks to the wonderful 66-yard touchdown pass by Case Keenum to Stephon Diggs. The Las Vegas Golden Knights defeating the Winnipeg Jets to advance to their first Stanley Cup final appearance in their inaugural season. Or 16 seed UMBC pulls the biggest upset in the history of sports perhaps over one seeded Virginia. To me, UMBC over Virginia is best upset, but best moment to me has to be the Vikings absolutely breaking the hearts of the Saints in the divisional round playoff. That was just a great moment, and 
that play will always be remembered. And that's going to be one that everyone's going to remember where they were when it happened. And so my pick is the Vikings and Stephon Diggs' 66-yard touchdown catch, the Minneapolis miracle of 2018. Unfortunately, the Vikings ended up losing to the Eagles in the NFC title game, but that was, to me, the best moment within the last 12 months in the month in the year of sports. Best team. A lot of good nominees for this. The Houston Astros, the Philadelphia Eagles, U.S. Women's Ice Hockey, the Women's Notre Dame Fighting Irish Basketball Team, the Men's Villanova Wildcats Basketball Team, the Golden State Warriors, and the Washington Capitals. These are all deserving choices. I'm going to take the Eagles. They were really, really dominant the whole year. Best record in the NFC and found a way to win the Super Bowl without Carson Wentz. So my pick's the Philadelphia Eagles. No disrespect to the Houston Astros. No disrespect to the Warriors. No disrespect to the Capitals or any of the college teams or the women's hockey team. But the Eagles are my selection here. First title in franchise history. They're the one seed in the NFC and found a way to win the Super Bowl without their star quarterback. Best play. This was like a bracket style. And there's a lot of good ones. Such as Enrique Ogubale's buzzer beater to win the women's national title game for Notre Dame. The Minneapolis miracle that I just talked about. The fourth down touchdown pass to Nick Foles in the Super Bowl. I just talked about Tua Tagovailoa to Devontae Smith for the national title game. The Women's World Series, Jesse Warren making the diving double play. LeBron's buzzer beater in Game 5 to defeat the Pacers in Round 1. The 80-foot buzzer beater by Blake Peters of Evanstown Township High School. Gareth Bale scores the go-ahead bicycle kick goal in the Champions League final. Cristiano Ronaldo scores the bicycle kick goal against Juventus. Julian McGarvey makes the last second steal and heave to secure the Ardsley High School's first Section 1 title in 60 years. LeBron's buzzer beater in Game 3 against the Raptors. The... Glass Kissing Buzzer Beater. Team USA's Jocelyn Lamarug Davidson scoring the shootout winner to secure the gold medal in women's hockey. Giannis Adetokounmpo leapfrogging dunking on Tim Hardaway Jr. at the Garden. The acrobatic volleyball play from Autumn Finney out of Dektar High School. William Carlson of the Vegas Golden Knights goes through the legs for the quote-unquote goal of the year. And Jordan Poole's buzzer beater to send Michigan to the Sweet 16 were your nominees. Your finalists. Enrique Angubale's buzzer beater for Notre Dame. The Eagles' fourth down touchdown pass in the Super Bowl to Nick Foles. Jesse Warren's double play for Florida State. And Blake Peters' 80-foot buzzer beater. My pick, the best play, the fourth down touchdown pass in the Super Bowl because that helped the Eagles win Their first Super Bowl in franchise history. They absolutely fooled the Patriots on that play. So that's my pick. Although I would have absolutely voted for the Vikings play for best play as well as the best moment. Because of the timing of the game. It was pretty much a Hail Mary. And they pretty much fooled the Saints on that play too. 
And that, like I mentioned, that Vikings play, a lot of people are going to remember where they were and who they were with when it happened. All right, that's it for the podcast today. I'll be back tomorrow recapping the ESPYs and all the awards that were picked. We'll see if the Manny Machado trade ends up happening or not. And we'll go over any other news that breaks in the world of sports. And I'll also be doing the 2010 NHL redraft. I hope you guys have a nice day.